Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Sujit Kumar, Professor of Surgery, Karpagavanaga Institute of Medical Sciences. So in this video, I am going to discuss about uh, Bailey image based MCQs. So as you all know that Bailey is the uh, Bible for general surgery. So, so this is the first session I am starting, uh, followed by a series of uh, the same session you can expect. So kindly watch these videos. Bailey image based MCQ. So this is a session one I'm starting. Okay, we'll go for the session. What is the diagnosis? What is the diagnosis? Okay, so here you can able to see the chest X-ray on the left side. Chest X-ray on the left side here and there are four options are given. Number one is the pneumothorax. Number two is paraesophageal hernia. Number three is pneumopericardium. Number four is hair under the diaphragm. Okay, so we will discuss one by one. What is this? First, we will discuss, we will take the pneumothorax. So, pneumothorax is nothing but a collection of air between the pleural spaces. That is the parietal and visceral pleura. So, in this region, you will have the collection of the air. So, the air usually the x-ray you can able to see the more black in color so lungs also the it filled it's filled with the air uh, you can see the air but it will be more darker uh, so that you, you see in this picture you can't able to see any uh, evidence of pneumothorax okay that is the first option is ruled out then followed by the second option that is a uh, we'll go to the pneumopericardium. Pneumopericardium is similar to the pneumothorax where you can have the collection of PR in the pericardial uh, cavity. So, you don't have, here you can able to, so you don't have any collection of PR. So, that is the second option that is also ruled out and this is the hair under the diaphragm. Hair under the diaphragm is otherwise called as pneumoperitoneum. So, mostly due to all of viscous perforation. Okay, so this is the right dome of diaphragm and this is the left dome of diaphragm. So, under that you don't get any uh, collection of hair. So, that is also ruled out. So, the only option available here is the paraesophageal hernia. What is this paraesophageal hernia? The esophagus that passes from the thoracic cavity to the abdominal cavity via the opening, so in the diaphragmatic opening. So, that hiatus, through the hiatus, if it is weakened, there will be herniation of the stomach from the abdominal cavity into the thoracic cavity that is called paraesophageal hernia or rolling hernia. So here if you watch carefully this is the cardiac uh, borders. <coughs> so here you can able to see a air fluid level that means the air fluid level means usually you will see in the hollow viscous that is the stomach and intestine. So you can able to see the air above the above the air will be present above and below that you will have the horizontal fluid level. So this is nothing but uh, air that is the presence of the air in the fundus of the stomach. Okay, Here you can able to see in the cardiac shadow behind that you got the uh, stomach, stomach is visible. If stomach is visible in the x-ray, chest x-ray then definitely it is a, uh, it is a paraesophageal hernia. Okay, So this is about the paraesophageal hernia. Okay, so we will go to the next question. This device is useful in. Okay, so there are uh, two types of devices are given. Okay, so straight away this is a straightforward question. You can go to that. This answer for this question is the carcinoma of the esophagus. Okay, the answer for this question is the carcinoma of the esophagus. So I will tell you that this is the uh, expanding metal stent. So, metallic stent, expanding metallic stent. So, this is EMS that is expanding metallic stent. So, you one, one is the uncovered one, another one is the covered one. Okay. So, this is ideally useful in case of carcinoma of the esophagus, particularly in the patient that is in the late stage or advanced stage. So, what will happen in advanced stages, the patient, you cannot do surgery. Even for palliation, if you do surgery, it is not going to improve the survival rate. So, it will cause more morbidity to the patient. So, aim of the palliation in late carcinoma of the esophagus is to patient has to take the food properly. That is, a, you have to relieve the dysphagia. 
So for that uh, you are using this uh, device that is the expanding metal stunt. Okay, so this can be introduced into the esophagus either radio radiological method that is fluoroscope or by the uh, endoscope method. So by inserting this uh, uh, stent into the esophagus and over the growth it will spread across and it will retain there and it uh, relieve the dysphagia. The patient can able to take the food properly. So this is expanding metal stent. Advantage is there is no need for the dilatation. So if you want to do the dilatation, so up to 8 millimeter you can do the dilatation. Beyond that not necessary and you can keep the stent. So the stent will be while introducing it will be in the collapsed state and uh, after introducing it will be completely it will expand. So this is a straightforward question. This is expanding metal metallic stent. Okay. So other conditions are ruled out straightforward. We will go to the next question. Okay. What is this? So this is which one is the uh, question is which one is Phrygian cap? Phrygian cap. There are four options are there. Okay. All of these are anomalies of the gallbladder and cystic duct. Okay. We will go for the discussion. Okay. The first thing what you are seeing. Okay, so the first one, so here, okay, so this is the first picture what you are seeing is the gallbladder is there, so this is the, so this is the gallbladder is there, you can see that there is a outpouching in the gallbladder, this is gallbladder diverticulum, okay, this is gallbladder diverticulum and number two, here in the six, second picture you can see that the cystic duct, cystic duct in, in, uh, ideally it has to be uh, connected with common bile duct. So this is common bile duct, it has to be connected with common bile duct. Here it is connected with the hepatic duct. So that is particularly that is the hepatic duct. So, uh, so this is one of the cystic duct variation. So this is also ruled out. And third thing what you are seeing this is called gallbladder septum. So there is a septum in the gallbladder wall and uh, this is the uh, uh, anomaly that is called as Phrygian cap which is nothing but the people of Phrygia used to wear these type of caps that's why it's called Phrygian cap. So this is nothing but a gallbladder septum. Next one is a gallbladder. So what you are seeing is the double gallbladder with a single cystic duct. Okay. So these all these things are ruled out. So we will go to the so answer for this uh, Phrygian cap. So Phrygian cap. This is the this is the Phrygian cap. Okay. So this is the Phrygian cap. Okay. So we'll go to the next slide. So so far we have discussed three questions. Okay. So okay. Which device is used for anastomosis in low anterior resection? There are four, uh, uh, four devices are there here given in the picture. Okay, so what you are what you are seeing in the first picture is the first picture is the it is a circular stapler. It is a circular stapler. Otherwise, it is called as end to end anastomosis. End to end anastomosis stapler. That means. So you got this circular stapler is ideally useful in one certain conditions like uh, while doing low anterior resection. What is low anterior resection? Low anterior resection is a surgery useful in case of upper one third of the carcinoma of the upper one third of the rectum and some cases of uh, middle, middle one third of the uh, rectum. So where you will do the uh, removal of the uh, rectum with the growth uh, giving some uh, giving the margins and take out the growth completely and the remaining cut end has to be anastomos that is called low anterior resection. So you got a two uh, stoma is there one, one is from colon another, another one from the rectum. So these two has to be anastomos by using a stapler called circular stapler that is called uh, otherwise called as uh, end to end anastomosis stapler EEA stapler. Okay, So that is the answer for this question. So what about the remaining options all the three are linear cutter okay linear cutter or linear stapler okay linear stapler so this is the linear cutter and these two are the linear stapler you can see that you can do the 
side to side anastomosis here you can do the side to side anastomosis that is a main advantage okay so the answer for this question is the circular stapler that is the first option and uh, go to that so you here you can able to see the circular stapler here you can see that uh, the circular stapler so this part is called as unwheeled or head so that part initially it introduced into the proximal side of the uh, colon or stoma then other, other the remaining part has to be attached completely and then you have to do the fire so once you fire it will uh, cut as well as do the anastomosis and this is a linear uh, cutter so this is ideally useful in case of gastrectomy uh, particularly if you want to close the stoma so if you want to close the duodenum duodenal part you want to close so you can cut and it will close that is that is a uh, linear stapler and cutter and this is a linear stapler so this is useful for all the types of side to side anastomosis okay which blade is used for incision and drainage of an abscess okay what is a abscess what is a drain this blade is so this blade so this blade is the 22 blade and this blade is the sorry i will put another one that okay so this blade is the 22 blade this blade is the 23 blade so these two blades are commonly useful for making a larger incision for example while doing mastectomy thyroidectomy or a herni hernia surgery you have to use this blade larger to make a larger incision or else if you want to do a sharp dissection then you can use this uh, blade to do the flap uh, flap rising and uh, dissecting purpose so this is this is not the blade used for ind okay these two options ruled out and next one is the this blue color that is a this is 15 blade 15 blade you can see the small blade how it appears this is useful for small uh, incisions like if you want to do surgery for the sebaceous cyst lipoma dermoid cyst in that case you can use this blade and uh, next one is the so this is also ruled out and next one is the this is the blade you have to use for incision and drainage this blade you you see that this very sharp and as well as it is is the size of the blade is 11 blade okay so this is 22 this is 11 and uh, and this is 15 and this is 23 okay so these are the numbers uh, blade numbers okay 11 blade so the 11 blade is the answer for this question apart from incision and drainage so it is useful for arteriotomy or venotomy that is you are making an opening in the veins as well as in the arteries then uh, this other use of the instrument is to keep the drain whenever you are doing surgery you want to do keep a drain so using this instrument uh, put a stop in session and a drain can be uh, introduced through this opening okay so answer for this question is the 11 blade identify the uh, limb reduction surgery in lymphedema okay all the four options Womans, Thompson, Charles, Sistrunk are all limb reduction surgery okay so we will go for the discussion so the answer for this question is the Charles operation Charles so answer for this question is the Charles operation so we will go for a, a brief discussion about these things number one cyst trunk is nothing but you take a wedge of the skin and subcutaneous tissues excision and then close it primarily that is called cyst trunk and this is the woman's this is the woman's where you can where this is woman's where you can see that either you can do it in the lateral aspect or in the medial aspect where you can take a wedge of the skin as well as the subcutaneous tissues and you try to close primarily that is called woman's so you can do either medial aspect or the lateral aspect but you should give at least six months gap between these uh, uh, procedures because there is more chances for the skin flap necrosis so try to avoid that one you have to give at least six months time okay next uh, these two are ruled out and the next one is the thompson procedure what is this thompson procedure thompson procedure is so here you can able to see this is a cross section of the limb so inside that you can see the bone is there and then 
defaces the and then uh, subcutaneous tissues and skin. The first you raise a skin flap, first you raise a skin flap and then take out the subcutaneous tissues up to the deep fascia. Then in the one flap what you have to do, take out the epidermis in the one side of the flap. So that flap has to be sutured to the deep fascia. This is called a buried dermal flap and the remaining flap has to be closed over this. Okay, So this procedure is called Thomson's uh, limb reduction surgery. And the next to last one is the Charles procedure where you can see the lymphedematous tissue. So procedure is removal of the skin, subcutaneous tissue, lymphedematous tissues and even the deep fascia also you have to take out completely. So once you take out these tissues, the raw area will be there. So that has to be covered with the skin graft. Okay, So that is the procedure. But the disadvantage of this procedure is uh, it will give you a poor cosmetic result. But the advantage is, so major amount of bulky tissues you can take in the Charles procedure. Okay, so the answer for this question is the Charles procedure. Okay, so what is the, what is the TNM staging in this patient? That is costume of prostate. Uh, what is the TN, T stage? They are asking only the T stage. Okay, so there are options are there T1, T2E, T2A, T2B, T3. So without knowing T stage, we, we cannot comment on this question. So we will go for the discussion about the T staging. Okay, so the T staging T1 is which is nothing but T1A. That is where in case of benign prostate hypertrophy, you are doing surgery. That is a TURP procedure, transurethral resection of the prostate. Uh, if you are sending that after the surgery, you are sending the specimen and less than 5 percentage of the specimen, it turns to be malignant, then it is called as T1A. If it is more than 5 percentage of the specimen is positive, that is malignancy is there, then that is called as T1B. T1C is impalpable, you do not get any palpable lesion with increased levels of PSA. T2A, that is a T2A, so you got two lobes are there, one lobe and then another lobe is there. T2A is the one involvement of one, one lobe. So this is called T2A. T2B, so that is the answer for our question. T2B is involvement of both the lobes. T3A is unilateral or bilateral extension. T3B is seminal vesicle extension. And other extension like uh, rectum and pelvic wall, pelvic wall that is T4. Okay, that is T4. Okay, so this is the, the staging. Okay, we'll go back to the next uh, same question. Okay, so the answer for this question is T2A because the involvement of the one lobe. Okay, which position is commonly used in digital rectal examination? Okay, so there are four positions are there. Uh, we'll discuss one by one. Okay, so so these three position you will use in the rectal examination. Number one, this one, and this one, and this one. Okay, and this one you, you are not going to use in the rectal examination. Okay, among the these three position, this is the one position called Sims position or lateral decubitus position. So ideally useful, ideal position for uh, digital rectal examination. Okay, all other position. So this is the uh, this is knee elbow position, and this one is the lithotomy position. So we will discuss one by one what is this positions. Okay, so the first position, the answer for this question is the Sims position. So this is the first position, this is a knee elbow position where the patient, uh, where the patient you can see the knee, you can see the knee is uh, a knee and as well as the elbow has to be kept like this or called uh, knee chest position. So in this position you can do the rectal examination particularly useful in case of young patients. And this is Tendelenburg position, second position is Tendelenburg position. This is unusually useful in case of while operating, particularly for any pelvic surgeries or in any varicose vein surgeries, you can put this position which is nothing but head and down. So okay, head and has to be kept low and foot and has to be elevated. So this is called Tendelenburg position. So this is to why in pelvic surgery it is needed. So if you put in, if you are putting in this position, all the bubble will go into the upper part of the 
compartment so you will have a free space to operate and uh, as well as to increase the venous return in case of varicose vein it will uh, veins will be emptied so this this is the use of this position so it is not indicated in rectal uh, examination okay we'll go to the other positions okay this is the sims position this is a sims position which is nothing but already told that so what you have to do the patient in the left lateral position with the left lower limb so this is not an ideal one i will show that another picture so ideally the left to lower limb has to be in the complete extension and the right knee has to be bent and it has close to the chest level so this is an ideal position and the gluteal region has to come to the edge of the table okay so this is the ideal position for uh, examination of the rectum and this is lithotomy position so this also i will explain okay so here also you can able to see the first one is the knee elbow position first one is a knee elbow position second one is a sims position or left lateral decubitus position third one is the jack knife position jack knife position is the one you see the position is so ideally useful in cases of where you are operating pylorudal sinus in the sacral region you have to put the patient in the prone position with the like this you have to put it and lithotomy position where you can see that the patient in supine position with the hip level it is externally rotated and as well as abducted completely and the knee in flexion so this is called lithotomy position all perineal surgeries you can use this position you can do the parietal examination also okay so here you can see the digital rectal examination this is an ideal sims position first picture so you do the inspection and palpation in digital rectal examination these things you have to assess intraluminal what is there intramural what is there extramural what is there okay so this is one of the coat that is uh, if it looks like a clover the trouble is over but if it looks like a dahlia it is surely a failure an old age say support okay so what is the option so this answer for this question so this is a picture answer for this question is post op hemorrhoidectomy okay so after hemorrhoidectomy uh, hemorrhoidectomy surgery if the appearance resembles that of the clover shape so you are doing hemorrhoid surgery after that if it appears like a clover like this okay clover then the surgery success rate is more high that is a successful procedure but if it looks like a dahlia so flower is the dahlia if it looks like a dahlia then definitely it is an more chances to get a failure so that is about the post of hemorrhagic